I was speaking on uh, Christian Science up in a Texas dude ranch to a, a group of uh, several hundred young Christian scientists, and the kids asked me about healing. Well, you can talk about healing just like I'm talking to you about healing, but sometimes it helps to give people proof. I didn't intend to do it, but in the end I did. We all dis dispersed to our cabins, and at about one o'clock in the morning, I felt this horrible, horrible pain in my head, and I thought it was a dream that a fish hook had gone through my head. But then I woke up and realized it wasn't a dream. The pain was very real, and um, my head was beginning to really swell. I had two of my fellow practitioners in the cabin with me, and I asked the ladies if they would get me to an airport. I didn't want the kids to see me because it was really getting kind of grotesque. And on the way to the airport, one of them said, do you want to know what happened to you? And I said, well, yeah. She said, well, we have a scorpion up in this part of Texas whose bite is generally fatal. I said, is that all it is? Only poison? I can deal with that. And I'll tell you why I could. Because in our textbook, Science and Health, there's a statement that reads, a spiritual idea has not a single element of error, and this truth removes properly whatever's offensive. I considered poison to be offensive, so I was absolutely confident that it would be removed properly. I don't know what proper removal is, but I trusted it would happen. And you may say, what do you mean spiritual idea? Where did you get this concept that you're a spiritual idea? Well, I got it from a, a book you're familiar with, the Bible. Because in Genesis 1, it says that man is created in God's own image and likeness. And then you might say, but I don't know exactly what God is. Oh no, Jesus told us that. Jesus said in the New Testament, God is a spirit. So if God is a spirit and man is his image and likeness, I guess the fact that man is a spiritual idea is a pretty good definition. So anyway, that was my prescription that, that I stayed with. I got on the plane. The plane was to stop in Texas again in Phoenix, and then get to California. My mission was just to get to California. But the pilot came back soon after I was on the plane and said, we got problems here. I mean, I really did look weird. He said, you were bitten by one of our scorpions. I said, yes, I was. He said, and you didn't have medical assistance. I said, no, I didn't. I didn't know how he knew all that, except that had I wanted medical assistance up in that ranch, I couldn't have gotten it anyway. Fortunately, I didn't need it. He said, well, it's a very serious situation, and it's probably fatal, and I cannot afford a mid-air collision or fatality, so therefore, I am going to take you off the plane as soon as we get to the next stop. I'm radioing ahead to my friend who is a doctor, and they'll meet you, we'll, we'll meet the plane with an ambulance. I remember thinking at that point that the pilot had become offensive, but his removal would be awkward if he's going to fly the plane. So at any rate, by the time we uh, got fairly close to uh, that Texas stop, uh, the pilot came back and said, he said it's far too serious for them to take care of, but that at the next stop in Phoenix, there's a large poison center. So we're going to take you onto the poison center, and there we will have the ambulances meet the plane. So um, I remember praying at each stop, Howard, dear God, I know that this, this resistance to my getting home is, will be removed properly, but how? He then called out for a doctor. He said, is there a doctor on board? The doctor came over. And I said, who's in charge now? They said, the doctor. I said, doctor, don't worry about this. It's going to be removed properly. He said, what are you talking about? I, said, well, I don't know. I said, um, it'll just disperse. He said, really? It will? Like, like I knew what I was talking about and he believed me? He said, well, what happens when it gets to your throat? I said, don't worry about it. He said, but you won't be able to breathe. I said, well, I'll tell you what, if I can't breathe, I'll, I'll push that little call button and you can have oxygen brought, okay? That's pacified him. I knew I wouldn't need it. I didn't need it. He came back before the Phoenix landing and he said, you know, it's doing what you said it would do, but what is it you said it would do? I said, it would be removed properly. He said, well, it is. It's dispersing. It is going down. So we will have the paramedics meet the plane in California. I thought, dear God, one more angel answer I need. And there it came. I said, that won't be necessary. My husband's meeting the plane and he's a doctor. He said, you're married to a doctor? Why didn't you tell us that before? I said, I forgot. He said, you forgot? I said, it's a long story. Well, he's not a real doctor. He's a PhD kind of a doctor, okay? School superintendent. Anyway, so that got me off the plane. The doctor walked me off very carefully. I thought I was holding him up at that point. And we saw my husband. He said, doctor, can you take care of this case now? And Don said, my husband said, sure, 
whatever this is. Well, of course, I had a very beautiful healing. In fact, I had a talk I had to give the following day. No one knew it. Whatever had happened, the swelling had disappeared. But that night, the kids called me. They had seen what had happened. They knew about the scorpion. They knew the, the prospects there. And so they were afraid they couldn't talk to me because I might not be here anymore. So they called for my husband. And he said, why don't you talk to her? And I said, you know what? You asked me about Christian Science Healing about 1 o'clock this morning. And I told you, you could trust your life to God. And I didn't mean to be your primary example, but that's how it turned out. And you can. That's just one of a thousand testimonies I could share with you.